Hi everyone, hope you guys are doing great. So as you can see, we have a canvas here. This is a studio canvas. It is a little shorter than a 16 by 20. So it's probably like 14 uh, by 20 uh, canvas here. I bought this canvas from Europe, so it's a little bit different, but 16 by 20 is a common canvas and um, that will work for this lesson as well. So whatever canvas you have available is totally fine. And we're gonna focus on painting a sky and some clouds and then we're going to also focus on adding onto it and add some trees and maybe a little river you know really quickly I'll describe how to how I paint my trees and hopefully you can you know learn some techniques from that all right let's go straight to it and go with the materials needed for today we need a palette of some sort and I am using a palette paper it's a lot easier and saves a lot of time because once I'm done I just bunch it up and throw it away so that's what I'm using. We need any water jar available you have. I'm using this big one right here. Okay. We need some paper towels. We need a palette knife to mix your paint with. For brushes, we need these blending brushes. They're both exactly the same, just different color, but they're the same size. Um, we need two of these. This is good for blending. We need some of these artist lab brushes. This is a number eight right here. It's rough synthetic hair, cheap brush. Um, it's good for once it's damp, it's rough, but once it's damp, it becomes soft. It's good for adding the details and, and a little bit of blending. And I'll show you how to use this. This is a number eight. It's almost like a filbert style right here. Okay. And then this is a number four same idea just a size half a size smaller okay right here and then any half an inch flat brush you have available okay and any detail brush you have available for the details this is a number zero round detail brush also uh, i use a double round zero brush so any any you have available will work and then also i like to use an artist sponge for my leaves and creating texture and things in my bushes and, and trees. And so we're gonna need this as well. For paint, we need titanium white, cadmium medium yellow, naphthol medium red, ultramarine blue, and carbon black. And these are acrylics. And if you have this, I like to use a hair blow dryer to dry out my first coats. The background, usually I use this when I paint my, blend my first coat of the sky, the background sky. I like to have it dry before adding more layers. So if you have this, great. If you don't, that's fine. You can let it sit and dry. Um, acrylics usually, you know, dry within 30 minutes, somewhere around there. You know, you could take a break and totally up to you. Um, but that'll be all for materials and we can get straight to it and um, go over how we're going to create this piece. So like I've mentioned before, I like to start from the furthest distance and work my way towards the closest. And I think that's the easiest way to work. There's different ways of doing it, but you know, experimenting, I found that this way works the best when I'm painting, you know, a scene because I can get the background covered and then add whatever's closest next we and then keep adding layering layering and and um, then adding my images closer and closer so um, for example i'm going to start with the sky sky is the furthest and then we're going to layer the clouds next and then after the clouds is the faraway mountains right um, or or trees uh, whatever you'd like on there whatever's next you think will be closer next right from from the land and then from the land, it comes even closer and it'll be, you know, more detailed um, subjects or whatever you want to add here. For us, it's going to be sky clouds and then we're going to add faraway trees and some, you know, closer trees here, a little bit of grass and maybe a little river here. We'll see how it goes. But that's the plan and hopefully you can learn how to paint the sky and clouds or get a better idea of how to do that and also the, the trees 
and the way I paint from the furthest distance to the closest. Okay, first things first, we're gonna pick up our titanium white and I usually pick up and start with my lightest colors and add my shades onto my palette um, with the lightest colors first. And then um, you don't really need to do this, but I always like to do it this way from the lightest to darkest. I always mix from the lightest to darkest. So I'm having an idea of, I'm gonna create like a little sunset, like a, like a not very intense, or too dark, but I'm gonna create a lighter colors from the bottom going into darker in the sky, right? So I'm gonna create lighter colors here going into darker shades here, okay? And this is important because this is where uh, some time spent mixing your colors onto your palette uh, first because once you blend in and mix your colors first perfectly the way you want it, you know, want them here, and when you go on to adding it to your canvas, you won't have troubles you know, blending or mixing too much because the shades and the transitions that you made onto your palette are a lot smoother, so it's easier to blend when you do use the blending brush, you know, and I'll show you how to do that. But that's why it's important to spend a little bit of time creating your shades here and then going onto your canvas because the process of adding the paint to your canvas um, is a lot faster and that part um, takes really fast to blend your colors and I'll show you. And so we're gonna pick up our white and we're gonna create, starting out with, um, let's start with four shades, right? Four colors. So I'm gonna add titanium white about, um, you know, about two thumbs, okay? Two thumbs. And we're gonna cover about half the canvas, maybe a little lower, but half the canvas. We're gonna, from here, going up all the way, covering the sky, okay? So um, just keep that in mind and you know get an idea. So I'm adding about two thumbs on each side, right? Like this, okay? About two thumbs amount of white. Now I'm gonna pick up my yellow and add a little bit right in here, very small amount. I don't want yellow to be too strong. Very small amount, it may be a little bit here, and that's it. Very small amount, as you could see. I want my sky to be, you know, not too dark with colors. But if you do want it more intense and darker, you would, you know, obviously add more color and less white. But today we're gonna focus on making clouds, right? We want our clouds to stand out and so I want the sky to be a little bit lighter in the background. Now we're gonna pick up red and we're going to add a little bit in here and a little bit in here, like this. All right, moving on, we're picking up our blue here and adding a little bit in here. Okay, maybe a little more actually right there. And I think for now, let's mix these colors and see what it gives us. And then from there we can add more if we need to. But I added about, you know, a thumb here for this one right here. Okay, that's what we have. And if you have a little bit less or more that, you know, just create it in your own way. There's no right or wrong. You can, you know, your, yours might look a little bit different. That's totally fine. See, experiment, have fun, and see, just learn the, basically what, what we're trying to do is learn the, the way how you can mix your own colors, but also learn to see how, you, when you mix, to see the colors that it gives us and the process of how to get to, um, from lightest to darkest, right? Um, and we're just learning how to do that. And the way yours will turn out, if it turns out a bit different, don't be frustrated. Um, that's totally fine. Um, it doesn't need to look exactly the same. So we're gonna pick up our palette knife right here and we're gonna start with the lightest color first because I usually mix with the lightest first because then I can carry the lighter onto my next color instead of working here and carrying the darks into my other colors. So that's why I mix with the lightest here first. This one's gonna be a nice light yellow tint to it but it's gonna be very light, right? 
Okay, gonna mix that. And the way I do it is I like chopping vegetables, right? You go, you go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and you just kind of chop back and forth. Okay, and that's how I mix my colors. And then bring it to the middle and then mix it again. And that should do it right there. Okay, bring it to the middle, moving on to the next one. A nice peachy color here because we added some yellow and a little bit of red. You could see a transition already starting to happen from light to dark, to darker color. So you can do this with any shades, any colors you want in your sky um, once you realize that you basically want from light to dark, right? It depends, of course, on what the scenery you're painting. Sometimes the sky could be so dark it could be one color or two colors. It might be like light white transition into a light blue, you know? You never know. There you go. All right, next. We're gonna mix. This one should be leaning towards pink, of course, and should be a little darker because we added more red. And as you can see, we have that nice transition going on. And if yours becomes a little too dark pink, I would add a little more white. So that transition here, I'm always looking at um, the colors, the changes between each color, because if it's a dramatic change, if this is very dark red and compared to this, if the change is dramatic, I would add more white to balance it out a little bit because then it'll be a lot easier to mix and blend the colors in. You won't have to fight it too much. So I recommend doing that. Um, keep in mind that it's important to make sure when you're mixing your colors onto your palette, the transitions are softer. Okay, there you go. That's perfect. And our final color here will be the light blue. And again, I'm looking for that transition, a softer transition, right? And I like it. I mean, I could see the pink and the blue, you know, the transition there, the blue is a little bit darker um, than the pink, which is good. We want that. Um, we want a, a little bit of a darker tone, whatever color you have. We have these colors going on here. Okay, and I mix it fully. There you go, that's perfect. And now we're ready to blend and put these colors onto our canvas and get quickly get the background laid out and blended. And this part is usually, this process is quick. So keep that in mind and maybe you wanna watch this part first before attempting or you, know, you can follow along, totally up to you. But this part will be a little bit faster. So before I start mixing, I like to pick up my paper towel and clean my palette knife really quickly. It doesn't have to be fully clean, but I like to make sure I don't have too much paint on my palette knife, right? And now what we're going to do is pick up one of our blending brushes. It doesn't matter which one, but pick up one of them and then your water here. And we're going to dab it all the way into the water, right? We're going to squeeze it. Make sure that don't squeeze all of it out. Like you want to make sure there's some water in there. Okay. So squeeze part of it but not you know you don't want too much in there but you want to make sure um, there is a little bit water in here right so basically play around test and experiment but i use water to help from uh, and mix with my acrylics instead of mixing it with any mediums to keep the paint from you know not drying on because i've tried that before and it becomes when i when i use it it becomes very chunky and like rubbery so when i blend it's just very rubbery and, and a little bit rough looking. So that's why I didn't like using mediums to my acrylics. I like using water and acrylics. That's, I feel like that's for me the best way to, to use because water does help a little bit from not for the paint not to dry so quickly. So that's why I use water into my brush and 
So my brush is damp and has a little bit of water in here. And we're going to start with the lightest color. So I'm going to pick that light yellow that we have mixed, pick it all up. And we're going to start from like a little bit lower, right? And we're going to add it right in here all the way. Pick up that paint and, you know, you could see the way you know you got enough water is when you feel the canvas and it's run, running smooth because your, um, your um, brush has water in it. So it's running super smooth and it feels like um, very soft. But if it's feeling rough, you want to dab your brush just a tip like this in the water. Just a tip, okay? And then pick up more paint. Um, and again, keep in mind you want to work fast during this process. So I'm going to go from one side to another like this. So now I'm going to dab my brush in the water, just the tip, and I'll show you once like this, just the tip in the water, and then I'm going to pick up my next color. Okay. And this part is usually when I'm not, you know, teaching or talking, this part is usually a lot faster and you have a little more time to spend. So I'm going to dab my brush in the water again, pick up more of this color. So um, you have to learn how to feel your brush, make sure it's nice and soft, right? So I'm quickly putting it and I'm not focused on blending yet, um, but I am um, first layering the colors down. So I'm going to dab my brush again, just the tip in the water and picking up my pink color here. Okay, all of it and adding that pink on top right here. Okay. You can go a little bit lower if you want. So I'm going to dab my brush in the water again, pick up some pink and dab more of my brush in the water because I feel a little bit rough going on. All right, there you go. Now I'm dabbing more in the water and picking up my final color here. Okay, this blue that we have mixed. So it's nice. So I'm gonna do the same thing, dab it just the tip in the water, pick up more of that blue and layer it on top of that, the final. So I'm dabbing again, picking some more blue and adding it right on top. Okay, covering everything. Doesn't have to be perfect, but go from one side to another. Don't focus on blending too much. There you go. So there, so now you have the colors. I'm gonna put it, my brush in a water jar and I'm gonna pick up my, bl my second blending brush and I'm gonna work dry. So while my paint is wet, this part, now you have to work again quickly in this part, but my brush is dry. And I'm going to start from the lightest and softly here, I'm going to swirl my brush and like use your wrist, swirl it. And from the bottom here, pull the paint, you know, like lightly upwards. So I'm lightly dabbing it and barely touching the canvas. Okay. And work from the lightest going in upwards. Okay. So very gently don't, you know, um, and make sure your paint is even on the canvas because if you added a little too much, um, sometimes you can carry the paint, um, you know, too much. You can carry it um, because of chunks. So make sure it's even. That's why I went back and forth the first time. But you could see I'm pulling the paint upwards and gently blending everything in and pulling the paint upwards. And this part doesn't have to be too perfect because this is our background. We're going to come back and add the clouds, right? But this is how I blend. I lightly swirl and use my blending brush dry and lightly pressing on, swirling and pulling the paint upwards. So I'm carrying that next color, the pink color up and it's mixing with blue.
take your time, you know. Try not to bring the darker colors down. So once you start start mixing the paint, you know, going up, don't focus, like, try to bring it down too much because then you're carrying the darks down. And um, you can fix it if you have another blending brush that is dry and ready for you. Sometimes it helps to have, you know, a few of these brushes laying around if you want. And there you go. We have, you know, blended everything nicely and now we're going to let this sit and dry. So while this dries, I'm going to clean out my brushes so they won't sit in the water jar too long. All right, I got a new water jar and my brushes are clean. Now it's still a little wet, so this is where I will use my hairball dryer on warm setting and I'm going to dry it out real quick. All right, now that it's dry, we can continue and focus on the cloud. So we've got our first base laid out. And the way I did it, it's, it's we're gonna go into detail about how I blend and how you can get different kind of smooth blends and stuff like this. But for this image, because we're adding clouds, I didn't mind having some, as you could see some, maybe you could see some far away, like little red uh, clouds going on here, right? I wanted that there. So that's why I went back and forth like this with my water and paint, right? Because I wanted a nice, some, some of them to stand out some uh, clouds here, right? And then we're gonna add some more clouds too, but, um, but there's a way where you can blend circular way where you, you know, add paint and then create a nice smoother blend if you'd like. And I'll show you ways of blending as well. But for this, since we're adding on clouds, we're gonna, you know, that's why we did it the way we did it. And so what we're gonna do here, I've got some paint left over. And if you don't, it's basically, you know, whatever colors you remember how to get these, right? You can rewind and look. It's basically for this one, for example, we're gonna use this pink. I have some left, I don't want it to go to waste. So I'm gonna bunch it up like this. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a little bit more red to it. So I'm gonna pick up my red right here and I'm gonna add a little bit of more red, okay? And we're gonna add a small touch like this. Not very much, but a very small touch like this, okay? So we're gonna blend this in with this pink and it's gonna be a, a darker pink, right? So a darker pink, it's gonna be one of our clouds one of our shades for the clouds. And in this blue, you see we have a bunch of blue here. Um, I'm probably not gonna use all this blue, maybe take part of it out in the corner like this, but what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna actually add a little bit of black, so carbon black. So a very small touch of carbon black right here, very, very small, okay? I'm gonna mix it in with the blue and we don't want it to be too dark. We, we want it to be darker than the background colors here, but we don't want it to be too dark. And, you know, you could have it dark if you want, but for this, I don't want it to be too dark. Like this, that's good. So you could see it's gray, but it has the blue still in it. So that's nice, okay? That's what we want, right there. And then what we're gonna do, I'm gonna clean my knife with a paper towel like this really fast and then pick up whatever color I have left here. I don't want it to go to waste. So what I'm gonna do is add some yellow. So some yellow right here and mix it in with whatever colors I have left from these two. It doesn't have to be exactly perfect. And I'm actually going to add a little bit of white because it's a little too yellow. So, a small touch of white. So, a little small white right there with my yellow. Because I had a little bit of that pinkish orange color left, it, my yellow became a little bit leaning towards orange, light, bright orange, and I like that. And basically what I'm doing is, and I added a little bit of white. I'm gonna leave that white there. 
And so basically what I'm doing again, I'm creating shades from lightest to darkest, right? And so for the clouds, um, I'm going to add the lighter clouds. I'm going to add them down below here more like the half the canvas. I'm going to focus on these lighter colors right here, right? But as I go up higher, I'm going to add a few darker ones up in here in the sky. Okay. With this, with these, and we're going to add some shadows because the sun is down below somewhere here. It's on the bottom and it's, you know, shining and hitting the clouds on the bottom of the clouds, right? So it depends. You have to think where your sun is, because if your sun right here is on the left side, then you got to focus more on adding the shadows on the uh, left side of your clouds more. Right. And on the bottom as well. And if it's here, you get the point. All right. So I'm going to do the same thing. Clean my palette knife so I won't have some paint drying up. Roughly clean it with a paper towel and we can now focus on adding some details to you know, adding our shapes of the clouds. And I am going to pick up my number four brush right here and then dab it in all the way in the water, right? Dab it in, make sure it soaks in and then squeeze it out a bit. And basically I want my brush to become nice and soft and damp. That's what water does. It helps to do that. And so first I'm going to add the shapes of my clouds and I'm going to start with this pink one first. Um, I'm going to add a few. So since my brush is damp, it's going to run smoother, right? And I'm just going to dab it like this and pick up not too much of this pink. And so now I'm going to, some of these shapes have appeared here, but that's okay. I'm going to, um, try to decide. This is where I decide where I want my clouds to be. So I'm going to go ahead and add some right in here. So I'm gently pressing. And I'm going to add some small ones right in here across. And because my brush is damp and has some water in it, it'll run very nicely. And as I go up, I'm going to add, you know, a little bit bigger. So I'm going to add some in here, maybe have it connect and fade out like this. So. All right, very nice and easy. Focus on the pink first. And then maybe here we're going to connect it lightly. Okay. Same thing here. I'm going to add some on this side and I'm going to add and yours could be any shape you'd like, you know, um, make sure your brush is a little damp and has some water so you're not, um, struggling and I'm barely pressing the canvas. I'm lightly adding in this pink, you know, and Okay, and then and then maybe there's some far away ones. And if it's easier for you to do this, you can also use your, you know, half an inch flat brush because it gets those fine small lines, but the clouds are not perfect. So um, I'm going to roughly add them in like this and fade it out. Okay. And also keep in mind, like where you're going to have your trees and stuff. So don't spend too much time on adding your clouds. And I mean, you can, if you want, but some of these are going to be covered with trees and the, and the bushes and trees uh, of the, the, the branches. So, um, I wouldn't focus too much. I just mainly focus on, um, you know, the, the shapes of your, your, your clouds and where you're going to leave. For example, if you already know you're going to have a tree here or here, I wouldn't focus too much on adding details in those areas. But if you're going to have this area in the middle, maybe more open, I would focus on adding more details there. You know what I mean? Um, so 
we added that and then maybe I'm gonna add some red in here maybe some in here who knows and if your brush starts to dry out I'm adding a tip in the water I'm dabbing it in the water again and I'm playing with this pink only first and you want to maybe add some red in here and as it goes as it goes higher the clouds become they you know become more spread out so you want them to be spread out more so you want the shape to look more like this right and it goes down here maybe and then maybe it splits here a bit and then it goes up randomly like this right So, picking more of that pink. Maybe some in here. Who knows? I have no plan. I'm just adding in the clouds where I want them to be. Yours could be totally different, totally up to you. This is the fun part. So maybe I'll add some, add a few more right in here. And I'm pulling it up a little bit. Maybe a little bit in here, like this. Okay, that's good right there. All right, so now I'm going to pick up my the, dark, uh, the darker shade right here, right? And make sure my brush is a little bit damp and not too wet. If you have too much water, it'll start bubbling up, you know, creating bubbles. And if that happens, you just dab it onto your paper towel lightly to make sure you take away a little bit of the water and then you pick up your color again. And so here I'm going to add the darker tones right on top of the, the pink we added, right? So here you can make them even higher if you wanted to. Okay, and maybe some in here as well. Totally up to you. And maybe a little bit. Maybe there's some darker ones right in here. And I'm adding on top of my pink. Now you don't have to add it everywhere. Make sure your brush is damp, okay? So I'm going to add a little bit of more water to my brush and picking up this color again and I'm going to add going to add I wonder if I should add a bigger one right in here yes let's add a big one right in here so Blending it, blending it in and spreading the paint wherever direction I want it to go. Because it's closer here, we, um, you know, we're, we're going to make it bigger. And I'm pressing w the areas where I want it to be a little more blended, blended. Because my brush is damp, I'm gonna press the corners and pull them outwards. Um, and that creates a nice, softer blend into the blues. Okay, something like this. 
there's no plan yours could look a little different than mine okay so now I'm gonna continue and I think I'm gonna continue and add some darker ones maybe in here I want to carry it out like this maybe this broke apart from this like that who knows but I'm not gonna spend too much time because again we're gonna add the trees and they're gonna be um, blocked a little bit these clouds so I'm gonna add a few more darker ones So what I'm doing is adding the darker ones on top and the lighter ones on the bottom. So you can play around with, you know, and some of them could be a little bit loose by themselves. Maybe there's one right in here. Who knows? more right in here I want this one to actually go a little further and you can see I am playing around and looking you can step back and see if you the way you added your clouds if you like the shape of them and keep going back and forth and adding as much or as little as you want totally up to you and I decided to add more as you could see like this and maybe adding some right in here I mean, we're, I'm gonna add a tall tree here, so I'm not gonna focus too much on this side But I might add one more right in here. Maybe a little one like this And then fading out like that Who knows? There you go. That's good enough for now All right, totally up to you have fun with this. Okay, so now you added your darks um, we might create, I'm actually going to create another darker tone. And so what I'm going to do is pick up my blue and add a little bit of black again to my blue. I'll, I'll show you exactly what I did. Um, I decided to add darker shade. I want these to stand out a little more. So I have a little bit of blue and a touch of black right here, right? I'm gonna take part of this and mix it in with these. So it's gonna be a very darker, I mean darker tone, you could see, but still leaning towards blue. But um, it's darker, as you could see. We want our clouds to stand out a little more. So that will be our darkest shade right there, okay? It's not too dark, but it is darker than our first, you know, gray color that we mixed with the blue, this one. And now I clean my brush, dabbed it in the water again. Make sure it's damp, 
I'm gonna pick up and use the same technique, but now I'm gonna add it, you know, on some of these clouds right in here. Now, I don't want it to do, I don't wanna add it everywhere, but on some of them, maybe there's some darker ones right in here, who knows, okay? And make sure your brush is nice and damp so it can run smoothly. So I'm gonna let it go up like this. And the way I do it is I usually use the corner and swirl my brush and blend it out, blend the colors out into my background colors. Maybe some in here, who knows? Maybe right in here. They don't have to be perfect. Clouds are never perfect. Okay. I'll add some in here. Maybe add a few darker ones right on top of some of these. I want this to stand out a little bit, right? So I'm gonna add some smaller ones right on top of the gray we added. Okay. There you go. So now I'm gonna try to blend those out. And I'm pressing a little bit harder to blend the dark ones in with my other gray, right? So I'm gonna play around with these colors now. So this gray that we have, maybe mix it in, you know, play around with these colors and add a little bit more softer tones. And it, you know, totally up to you how you want it to look. It doesn't have to be super perfect but we want to smooth some of these out, right? So we're going to add a little bit of this gray and play around. Right? See, that looks much better because we have added that darker color. So I'm gonna add a little more gray right in here and maybe split it up, add some little ones for fun. Totally up to you. Okay, and now this, you could spend as long as you want as much as you want on these clouds so maybe here I'm gonna fade it out right here who knows with a lighter gray all right that's good enough for now All right, now we have it blended a little bit nicer. And if you need to blend a little more, totally up to you. Spend a little more time adding in the gray and the darks. Move the clouds around. You know how clouds move. That's what you gotta do. You gotta focus on playing around and moving them wherever you feel the direction they're going. They wanna go. All right, that's good for now. And now I'm going to, actually I decided to add a little more red in here. I want, I want this to 
maybe connect somehow. Maybe it's split from this one and it's going up. Like it's going down, I mean, like this. I want that to stand out a little bit more. So maybe there's another. You broke off that one, right? So basically, the closer it gets to you, these clouds, the more detailed they're going to be, right? So that's why I'm spending a little more time on these ones up close. All right, I'm going to leave it at that. Now I'm going to clean my brush. And I didn't forget these other two colors that we have, right? So I'm going to clean my brush into the water. And now I'm going to use this like bright yellow orange color that we have mixed, right? I'm going to do the same technique. And but first I'm going to add it right with this, right on the bottom of this um, pink that we added. Okay. And I wanted color. That's why I added, made it look yellow. I wanted my clouds, even if they change to a little more orange, I like that. You could use your finger sometimes, that helps. But you could see it's making these clouds stand out more and it's giving that warm color, that warm feeling. You know, sometimes clouds have that nice um, um, reflection of the sun hitting. So I'm going over some of these and, you know, maybe some in here. You could use your finger again. I like to blend it out like that. And then all right, with water and some yellow right underneath your pink, you added. You want to even go over the pink as well if you want. Okay. Maybe there's some far away ones. You could use your finger, like I said, totally up to you. And as you go up, doing the same thing, we're going to add on the bottom of these. And add some color. You can even take the this orange color and Take it as high as you want. So I'm going to add right underneath here as well. Blend it in, even with the gray if you want. Totally up to you. Totally up to you. Right underneath. Maybe it goes down like this a bit. Maybe some of them can be on their own, like this one, for example. Okay, doing 
the same thing here. Don't worry about trying to make it perfect because these are clouds. So I'm gonna dab a little bit of my brush in the water, pick up more of this yellow, right? Very small amount, and doing the same thing. Maybe some of them are, they get a little bit smaller here and some have, you know, split up and they're on their own. I wanna make a bigger one right in here, adding a little bit more right in, on the bottom right here. And because my brush has a little bit of water, it, you can, again, you can use your finger to spread it out and blend them out if you'd like. You see what it does? It creates a nice glow effect to these clouds. And that's what we want. Maybe some sharper ones right in here. Who knows? And there's different ways of painting clouds. This is one of my favorite ways because I love the color and you can totally, you know, create the shapes and you have that freedom to do that. There's no, like I always say, there's no right or wrong. You have that freedom. But there's different ways. There's some clouds that are super plain and white and fluffy. And, but it does have the similar technique. You know, you want to add the shadows. If you want to add the shadows, you, you have that similar technique where you mix your colors from lightest to darkest. Usually it's around three to four different shades. And then you play around with those shades. Um, but you, gotta, you have to know where the sun is. So since the sun is in the bottom, that's why I'm adding the colors, lighter colors on the bottom. And I'm not overdoing it. You could see I am adding some, you know, on some of them. I don't wanna add too much. So I'm going to blend this pink a little bit with a, you know, and who knows, what if there's some fluffy ones far away? Who knows? So I'm going to blend it, this in a little bit more with this yellow. I want it to be softer looking. softly with this light yellow you can do a lot it's a nice nice transition since my brush is a little damp you could see it's lightly adding it but not too much all right that's good enough you can like I said you can add you could spend a lot of time adding as much as you want, right? But let's continue. So now I'm gonna use this white. Remember we have mixed right here and I'm not gonna clean my brush even if it has a little bit of yellow coming in, that's totally fine. I'm gonna use this white and I'm gonna really make some of these clouds stand out, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with here and I'm gonna, um, so I'm gonna dab my brush in the water again, lightly so it can run smooth and use some of this white 
doing the same technique and even add it lower on some of them. Now I'm going even softer. I'm not trying to add too much. So I'm skipping some and but I am adding it on the bottom of this yellow. Okay, that'll really make your clouds pop out. And you could use your detail brush if you'd like on this part. I usually like how my um, artist lot brush is giving me some freedom to to the shapes of the clouds you know um, so you could see I'm splitting some and adding this white so maybe here it goes like this who knows maybe here it goes in a little bit and you can blend it in a little bit with your finger that helps a lot as well. So I'm gonna add some sharper ones right in here. Who knows? Maybe there's some right on this one, right? And maybe okay, and then maybe some in here. really decide where you want it to go going to add it everywhere but I want some of these to stand out right so with the white let's continue adding on the bottom Don't forget about these guys right here.
maybe here we're gonna add a little more white who knows blend it in with the sky who knows Maybe some in here. Now, once you have your clouds laid out, you can step back and take a look at them. And if you like the way they look, you can move on to the next part, which is adding the next closest thing after the background sky and the clouds. It's going to be the faraway land um, or the trees or the mountains or whatever you want. We're going to focus on the trees. So we're going to add some faraway trees, right? But also keep in mind, you can play around and blend them in as much as you want totally up to you and it's just going back and forth and it's all about adding layers now so i'm going to clean my brush and now this is where you can just go back and forth maybe go back with this yellow and blend it in some of these with where the white is and make them a little bit smoother with the white you know totally totally up to you okay and since my brush has some water in it it you know runs nice and smooth so I'm adding that in you know totally up to you so spend a little bit of time having fun maybe go back to this pink and add some pink in the sky who knows who knows totally up to you also if you want to spend a little time detailing like I said, you can come back and even add more color. For example, I added, like we did with this gray and added a little darker, right? You can do that with this pink, maybe, you know, mix it in or use it as a, by itself, but make sure your brush is damp so you won't pick up too much of this darker pink, right? And then go back and maybe add some on some of these, you know, add this pink. You could see him blending everything in. Maybe some of them are on their own, who knows? this color I'm going to add a few more fun details make this 
darker because the light is hitting that. So now you got your basic layout of your clouds and you got some detailing going on here. If you'd like to do this part, totally up to you, but with a detail brush, and I always dab it in the water, fully in the water. So I have some water in here and I'm going to play around with this white and yellow here um, if I want, but mainly white. And I'm going to swirl it like this and my brush is, you know, a little wet and damp. That's what I want, right? And so I'm going to pick up this white and I'm going to detail my clouds here for example let's say i want this to be a little more and i'm going to go you know i'm not going to be too perfect but i'm going to split some and add more white onto some of these right and right on the bottom totally up to you you know detail as much as you want make it look as realistic as you want maybe some in here maybe it splits in here And this is where the detailing comes in, okay? So take your time, no rush. Water and white, play around with these colors if you want. split some maybe it splits in here who knows I like to use my finger to blend it all out so it won't be too perfect maybe split it in here and then in here who knows you want it to look not too perfect and here maybe it goes up and comes down and next to this who knows all right totally up to you and you know this is if you want this is the detailing part if you want to make it even smoother you know what I mean and you're gonna go over I'm not gonna do everything you get the idea basically go around on the bottom and maybe even some of these parts And add a little more detail but our clouds are pretty much done Maybe it's placing here lightly and if you add it too much you can always use your finger or what I like to use is the paper towel and I like to sometimes you know with my finger, if I have a big smudge or something, I dab it in the water like this and I just clean it out with water and paper towel. Totally up to you. For example, let's say I made a smudge like this, right? With a wet paper towel, I just lightly clean it and wipe it off and there you go. All right, I'm gonna stop right there because I can go on and on, like I said, detailing 
um, with my detail brush going back and forth trying to make them stand out a little more right these clouds totally up to you um, how you want them to look okay how much time you want to spend on them okay but I hope I hope this was helpful and you got some you know something good out of this lesson into your own art and there's no right or wrong like I said you can add your clouds more circular more fluffy same idea same technique with adding the shades but I wanted to make it more a little dramatic that's why I added a lot of detail to a lot of this because I wanted you guys to see how I add my light color to dark and how I smooth them first I quickly add the base of them and then I go back and add the darks and then the lights and I go back and forth and play around and the more you add the more smoother it will turn out and that's why I like working with acrylics because it's just adding it's all about adding you know details and then you go back and forth and spend as much time as you want even you can add some extra ones who knows you know totally up to you okay I'll be done for today I hope you learned a lot we have a basic sketch down right here as you could see now we can move on and focus on adding the faraway trees and the detail of our landscape but this is how I paint my skies I hope this was helpful so this is part two of the process and I do have the full tutorial available in my mentorship program if you're interested and there's plenty of more other in-depth lessons be sure to check that out but I decided to give you guys here a version of this lesson that is available there so I hope you'll enjoy the rest of this video and learn a lot from it thank you for being here guys and take care and see you soon
Thank you. 
Thank mm-hmm. you.